What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV, back here for another Tottenham transfer update. And uh, we've got the same old names revolving once again. And let's start off talking about Sergio Regulon as the Athletic and football, the Football League world are also saying that there has been limited interest in Sergio Regulon this summer. We did hear a week ago from, I can't remember the source, but that West Ham were interested, Juventus were interested, sources, Manchester United potentially um, interested again. But the Athletic, who are obviously a very good source, saying that there is limited interest in Regulon. Is that something you're surprised at? A bit, I have to say, because, you know, he had a, I think he's a good player. I know the last few years haven't really gone his way, but I thought he did really well at Brentford last season. We've seen him... Um, even at Spurs, he had some, had some really good spells at Spurs when he was in the team, especially under uh, Mourinho and uh, occasionally under Conte, but not too much. Um, obviously, he was a Europa League winner at Sevilla. And we know he's a very, very capable left back, in my opinion. I, I think he's a, he's a good player. Maybe it's because he's on high wages, potentially, and maybe because he doesn't have long left in his contract. I don't know how much money Tottenham are demanding. But I would have thought there would be a, quite a big a bit of interest um, in Regulon this summer. Because I think there's not many good, good left-backs out there. And I think Regulon would do well um, at a team. For example, West Ham. I think he would be a perfect fit West, for West Ham for what Lopetegui is trying to do. So maybe it's just a case of we're still early in the summer and there will be clubs coming in for him. But I'm surprised that they haven't had as many inquiries as maybe they should have for a player of Regulon's quality, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm just looking at his wages, and I actually thought he was on more than what he's on. He's on £53,000 a week, which is not, you know, crazy amounts in this day and age. So you would have thought maybe with those wages, with um, a reduced transfer fee, with him being in his last year of his window, you, there would be some interest. But maybe because of the way the last few years have panned out for him, I know he had a successful loan spell at Brentford, but... Um, the limited times he did get on the pitch for Man U, I think he did impress in small spurts. But then the, pre the previous season at Atletico Madrid, he struggled to get on the pitch. Injuries plagued his time there. And apart from last season, injuries have always been a, a common theme with him. Hmm. Which is true. And maybe that's what people are looking at. But he did play, eight, I think, uh, 18 times, or started um, f uh, 18 times for Brentford last season. So I think he showed last six months. He, you know, he has a propensity. To, he can play consistently. I think he was consi played consistently well as well. I do think he'll find a move. It's, I think it's just right now. Maybe there's no interest, but I think later down the line, I'm sure he'll find somewhere. Mm, let's hope so. Uh, Pierre Emohoyer, Pete O'Rourke, saying that Dortmund and Atletico Madrid are interested in signing Tottenham midfielder Pierre Emohoyer. Should Hoyer leave the door? Uh, leave the door would be open for Spurs to recruit another central midfielder this summer. Nothing new there. I think we've heard about the Dortmund and Atletico interest for quite some time now, and I think this one will pick up a bit more once he returns from holiday. Yeah, he looks like he's having a nice. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember where where is he the Maldives or something something like, like that, something yeah. like that. Yeah. he just so posted a picture of him lying by yeah. the pool saying out of office yeah if I was him I wouldn't be looking at a move just yet just hang just chill but um, we know that Hoybeer has surplus requirements to Tottenham I do think he's a good player I do think um, uh, under a different manager it would be uh, he would be a good fit for us but I just think under Postecoglou it's not the right fit we all know that so I think he's got some good clubs after him and I do think he'll find a move but I think we're just weighing around. Um, obviously, we are going to be moving for another midfielder regardless of Hoybier. I mean, obviously Hoybier is leaving but I think that midfielder will be a number six once we once he leaves. Yeah. Let's talk about Emerson Royale. Matty Moretto says that AC Milan and Tottenham will discuss the possible transfer of Emerson Royale again this week. Spurs have been asking for 20 million euros to sell the player and their desire, there is a desire from both sides to close the negotiations. Emerson has already been planning life in Milan, which is a sign of the concrete possibility of the deal being completed. Mm. So I don't think there's any kind of fear of this move breaking down if, if he's already planning life in Milan. It yeah. sounds like it's close, to be honest. So... I think when we're talking about the difference in price um, to, to what Spurs want, to what Milan want, um, I don't think it's that much, and I'm sure they'll come to a compromise. So I do think it's going to happen sooner rather than later. Yeah, and I wish him luck. He leaves. did return to Hotspur Way, didn't he, uh, this week, posting a caption saying, the king is back. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, uh, and he also did um, say that in the training videos uh, in the gym as well, saying the king has returned. So you got to admire the confidence. Mm, definitely. And that's, that's always been a lot with Emerson, a bit tongue-in-cheek. Yeah. 
Uh, let's move on and let's talk about the potential striker search as Peter O'Rourke says that Tottenham have set their sights on Santiago Jimenez and Ivan Tony as our de ideal replacements for Harry Kane during this window. A striker is a key area of the team that Spurs have been looking to strengthen for some time. Paul O'Keefe says that Tony and Jimenez were both on the list. However, the interest in Jimenez has decreased. Yeah, that's what we heard because I think we've gone off the ball for him a bit for one reason or other. I don't know whether it's a scouting or the price we've been quoted or what what's happened, but it does sound like it's gone a bit cold with uh, Jimenez. Obviously, Tony, currently the way of the Euros at the moment, um, I personally think he'd be a really good fit, but there's still a lot of question marks surrounding him as well. It's not a foregone conclusion whether he would be a right player to come to Tottenham due to you know other some things surrounding his football ability, but I do think price wise it could it could really work with uh, Ivan Tony. Um, but whether we're going to sign a striker at all is still up in the air because I know Tottenham are linked to bringing various forwards, but are we going to get two more wingers? Are we getting one winger and a striker? Is what's Richarlison's future um, going to be like come the end of the window? I think there are so many questions up in the air at the moment. I think we hopefully will get a clearer picture before the start of uh, pre uh, well, before we get going on the friendlies hopefully yeah let's hope so we are a week to go just like a week tomorrow uh, before our first pre-season friendly against I'm not sure if it's Hearts or QPR first but one of them um, in terms of dealing with Brentford I do feel like it could be a bit of a battle we've seen Spurs and Brentford go head to head a number of times now um, the David Rea deal which obviously didn't work out for us the Noosa deal which they won and then obviously Eddie Johnson as well Brennan Johnson was one. Then obviously very recently, Archie Gray, where it all looked set that Archie Gray was joining Brentford. Spurs came in and got the deal over the line. So a bit of toing and froing between Brent, Spurs and Brentford over the last uh, year or so in terms of potential transfer targets. And I don't know, I, I feel like Brentford are going to make it very hard for us to sign Ivan Tony. Maybe. Uh, maybe they'll be pissed off at us. Or maybe they'll be realistic and, and uh, be willing to deal with us. But we'll have to wait and see. Look, if... Let's be honest, if let's say we come in for him, I don't think any club higher than Tottenham are going to come in for him. And so any club lower than Tottenham, let's say West Ham go for him. Well, Brentford might feel like West Ham are more of a direct rival to them than, than Spurs. So maybe they'll be more willing to deal with Spurs than West Ham. I do, you know, depends who else comes in for him. Yeah, also a very good point. But again, like I said yesterday, that I, I find it hard to see us going for a number nine with the heavy links that we are, you know, going for you looking at Desiree Duye, Pedro Neto, uh, Eberechi Eze and if we do sign potentially two of those or even one of those can you see us going for that number nine I, I can only see us going for a number nine if if uh, Richarlison does go out the door and all the noise point to Richarlison staying at the moment well the rumours are we want two more forward players mm. that, well I'm hoping so anyway that's the rumours albeit we are pretty stacked at the moment we, obviously people are going to have to leave probably people like obviously Hill we know is definitely going to have to leave Solomon's probably going to have to leave as well um, if you can find guys to take yeah you. I know they're probably going to have to leave I'm saying they're probably going to have to leave um, for, for us to do that but if we're looking for two more four players I just I, um, then I think it could be a striker if it's only one more winger because we do have quite a lot of wide players at the moment mm. Uh, let's talk about Eberechi Eze now as Matt Hughes says that both Tottenham and Man City are willing to trigger Eberechi Eze's 60 million Crystal Palace release course. However, the Athletics say that Man City are not currently planning a move for Crystal Palace's Eberechi Eze. But on the other hand, Ed Ahrens say that Arsenal are understood to be among several clubs interested in Crystal Palace's Eberechi Eze. And uh, the prospect of Eze in that Arsenal midfield is uh, not one I want to think about, to be honest. Yeah, definitely not. Let's hope um, we can sell him a, a project at Tottenham where he would be more, things would be more based around him rather than Arsenal. But look, when Arsenal, if Arsenal come calling, it will be um, it's going to be tough. You can see with Calafiori, they've they're gonna, it looks like they're going to get close to him now. Obviously, they're in a title race. We're all there looking for another title charge against Man City at the moment. So it's going to be, uh, <coughs> look, obviously, with Eze um, looks at that and Arsenal interested in him, that could be something he'd be very interested in. But I don't Arsenal fan as well. Uh, he said he, he said when he was younger, it was a dream for him to play at Arsenal, be it Arsenal release, uh, release him or rejected him. So um, I don't know what, what, what he feels about that at the moment. Probably he's water under the bridge, I'm assuming. But maybe Tottenham um, could steal a march maybe they're the ones who can put the, put the money up front and show how much they want Eze um, but it's going to be a difficult um, competition with Arsenal for sure yeah
And last but not least, Jacob Ramsey's Sky Sports say that Tottenham are still exploring a deal to sign Aston Villa midfielder Jacob Ramsey by offering Giovanni Lo Celso plus cash in return. Not the first we're hearing of this kind of deal. I think the last update we brought you regarding this, that Aston Villa completely rebuffed it, but maybe it's something they will consider. Well, it depends how much money. It's all about how much money we put up front, of course. I think the money originally was, what would they say? It was like 25 million plus Lo Celso. I think around that figure, yeah. Um, so they obviously want more than that. I don't know how much they value Lo Celso at. For me, I'm not desperate to get Ramsey and I like him. I think he's a good player. Um, does he benefit the team? He does. He, he adds squad depth. But um, I don't really see a natural f place for him in the squad. I don't really like him out on the left in our system. And then in midfield as a number eight, um, I think he's, that would be his position. But we do have a lot of players there. Um, and I don't think he massively improves that as much as he in increases the depth. Um, and now we've got Gray there as well, who can also play the eight. So I don't see a massive need um, for Ramsey right now. But I I'll be interested to see where he fits in if we were to bring him in. Mm. But the noise doesn't really stop on uh, Jacob Ramsey. It's been going on for the last couple of weeks, albeit a lot less noise now than it was maybe a, a week or two ago. But as they say, sometimes there is no smoke without fire, but we'll have to wait and see what happens with this one in the coming weeks. Uh, but that is your Tottenham update for today. Let me know in the comments section below your thoughts regarding all the news stories we brought to you today. It does seem to be the kind of same names and same stories revolving over and over again, which uh, is becoming a bit mind numbing. But let's hope we do have some new names and some developments on these stories in the coming hours or coming days. But thank you everyone for watching us today. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come, come on you Spurs. Spurs.